What's up guys, it's Doug and today we're going to be doing Tiana Taylor's album KTSE. We're going to be reviewing it. Um, for those of you who don't know, who didn't watch the video that I put out, my speaker broke and uh, it's very expensive uh, here in Brazil. So until we're able to get a new one, uh, we will be doing just reviews instead of reactions. There's a video on it. There is a Brazilian version of a GoFundMe. Um, if you live in America and you don't live in Brazil and you'd like to donate, uh, the links are all in the description of that video. And um, yeah, basically this is just a new format that we're going to go with. We're not going to stop production at all. We're just going to keep doing the same videos as always. We're going to be reviewing the albums and the reviews are going to be a lot more detailed since I get to actually write down my thoughts on the album. But basically, I've already heard it and so I'm just going to give you track by track what I think, how I feel about the project. So uh, we're not going to waste any time. We're just going to get right into this review. Um, oh. Also, uh, I made a Patreon. The link is in the description if you guys would like to help me out, support me in any way. It would be greatly appreciated and there's like, in the link if you click through it, there's like all the different rewards that you get for being a different type of uh, sponsor, stuff like that. And again, as always, all the links are in the description if you need to hit me up, if you need to follow me in anything, support me on Patreon, all in the description, that's where you'll find it. You can't see it, but off camera I'm going like, it's all in the description. That's where you're gonna find it. This is KTSE by Tiana Taylor. Shutting haters up, feel like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Bring on every finger, feel like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. I'll be selling out of arenas, feel like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. All time great, I feel like Kobe For the first track, No Manners, I thought that it was a really great intro. Um, it felt short to me. I wish I actually had more because I was absolutely loving the sound that Kanye and Tiana were able to create. I felt like the chord progression was very jazzy. It had incredible strings. I don't know if it was a sample, if it was actually programmed by the producers, um, but I just really loved the whole sound. There were great vocal chops and great samples all throughout this track. I mean, they have like these, these hums in the background. They're really subtle. They really highlight Tiana's vocals. I thought that was a really cool detail. I wrote down that this track has like an overwhelmingly soulful feel, which is something that I really wasn't expecting. I was expecting more of like a trap R&B type of style, and we definitely get some of that later on in the album, but um, I felt for this, it was just really soulful. It felt really old school, and I absolutely loved it. The ending kind of bleeds into the next track, which I thought was kind of like an abrupt, subtle ending, but there is a point in this album when Kanye says no fade outs, um, so I guess that's just it's, it is what it is. Um, I already mentioned I thought it was kind of short. I really wish I had more. And um, I thought that in the lyrics, uh, it was really cool because she kind of flipped the social script, kind of where, um, you know, normally society says that you have to be like ladylike and you have to be respectful and polite in order to get a husband or a man or for, in order to be desired. And she says about her relationship, she's got a man and she's a girl with no manners. And um, I just thought that that was a cool, uh, almost critique on society. That's my take on that first track. I thought it was really cool. I loved it. Um, I definitely go back and listen to it. It's just kind of short, really. That's the only problem I had with it. So we're going on to track two, Gonna Love Me. Um, throughout this project, we really get uh, a recurring theme where it's really old school, it's very jazzy, we have a lot of smooth guitars, and this track is definitely no different. So this track really is a mixture of smooth jazz with boom bap. Uh, and I thought it was fantastic, you know, I absolutely love this beat, the, uh, the drum programming that Kanye made. Um, it feels really bouncy, but at the same time, so jazzy, so soulful. The sample is absolutely incredible, it fits so well with this track. Um, I really feel like the, this whole project has such a different feel to it than the other projects that came out that were produced by Kanye uh, this last month. Uh, and it's something that I really enjoyed, like I absolutely adored this style of music. In this track, her voice is absolutely spectacular. I mean, she can really sing. I wasn't too familiar with Tiana's work before, but I was absolutely amazed by her voice, by the riffs that she did. They were, I mean, it just sounds so good. Literally an incredible song to just put on and ride around to. It's a fantastic track to listen to um, in the background if you're having dinner, um, or literally if you just want to relax and you just put this on and listen to it. Um, it definitely put me in a more chill state of mind and I really enjoyed it. The, the cool thing about the production in this track is that it's so simple. Um, there's no crazy drum fills, there's not too many percussive sounds. It's literally just a simple boom bat beat with a really cool smooth guitar over it a really soulful sample, and it's so understated, it really highlights Tiana's vocals, it really makes her vocals the center point of this piece, um, which is really cool. The backup vocals, they come in every now and then, they are so subtle, but they really do everything for this track. If you listen to it, um, and you can pick out some of those little backup vocals that come in, 
they're incredible. They really do everything. I mean, without them, this track does not feel so good to listen to, really. Um, and it's one of the first things that I noticed as soon as I heard it. I was like, oh my god, this, this sounds so beautiful. Towards the end of the track, normally the hook is the, uh, for this track, the hook comes in and it's actually the sample is the hook. But towards the end, she actually sings the sample along with the sample being played. Her riffs are absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, it sounds so good. That's all I can really say about this track is that it just sounds so good. Literally like honey but for your ears. It's just sweet. It's amazing. Another thing that I thought was really cool in, that in her first verse she apologizes for some of the things that she says to her husband if they ever get into an argument. You know she says sometimes we really say things that we don't mean. Um, and I thought that was cool because in the second verse she actually apologizes because sometimes she feels like they don't say enough. So I thought that that was a really cool contrast, where in the first verse you, uh, you get upset and you say things that you don't mean. And in the second verse there's a lack of communication and so you start to misunderstand each other because you're not saying enough. Um, I thought that was a really cool contrast, it provided really cool uh, music. I actually really adored this track, it's one of my favorites off this project. So, track three, it's called Issues slash Hold On. When this track starts off I'm immediately uh, drawn to it already because I love songs that are in 3-4 and it starts off with this song that's in 3-4 super jazzy so soulful and I'm just like you know one two three one two three one two you just kind of like want to sway to it listen to it lean with it rock with it it just sounds so mellow so chilled um, it really puts you in this state of mind where you're just relaxed one thing that I really was not feeling in the song were the futuristic sounds in there like you get a couple bleeps and bloops like you did with um, with Ghost Town uh, featuring Kid Cudi you know those really futuristic sounds he just kind of Kanye just kind of put them in there and I felt like it just felt really out of place I wasn't feeling it but you get a couple of those in the beginning and uh, you get a couple more later towards the end of the track so you're listening to this beginning and it's in 3-4 and it sounds great and then all of a sudden it switches into 4-4 and it gets really upbeat and almost instead of smooth jazz it turns almost into doo-wop um, and it just again so cool it sounds great um, it's such a different sound. It feels like you go right into the 50s when you start listening to this track. It's absolutely amazing. Again, the backup vocals, they're, they're actually what makes this song feel so doo-wop-ish. You know, uh, it, it's, it just provides this really cool atmosphere to the music. Her voice is absolutely probably one of the more soulful voices I've heard. You know, I love music like Daniel Caesar, her, uh, Bryson Tiller, Tory Lanez, where it's really that like R&B slash trap style, um, really smooth, really mellow, um, Sabrina Claudio, artists like that. And that's what this beginning of this project really reminded me of. It really felt just so awesome. Towards the end you get a really cool switch up where we get some strings and I love strings in any music. I love violins, I love cellos. Again, it adds atmosphere, it adds character to this track. It adds romance. This song is definitely very romantic, very intimate. At least it felt like that when I was listening to it. And um, a lot of these tracks talk about love, her relationship with her husband, her kids, and it just felt like a really great track to listen to. It was very fun. Next we get Hurry featuring Kanye West. And um, this one definitely didn't feel as old school, as jazzy, as soulful as the other tracks. Uh, that's for sure. It already off the bat sounded different from all the other tracks. Um, it sounded more funky. It had like this really cool guitar and bass riff where it was just really groovy. It felt like 70s, 80s-ish. The beat is more so focused on the bass line to carry it all the way through with the guitar riffs playing kind of in the background um, and just really, really melodic. Uh, it's, it's definitely a motif for this track, that little guitar riff. It just keeps coming back, the same little riff, and you'll start to recognize it, but definitely focused on the bass line, this beat. You know, it really feels like something that you can just like move to. It's, it's groovy as hell, this track, really. It definitely felt a little bit more fun than the previous songs, and um, one thing is for sure, it is definitely way more sexual than the previous songs. She talks about her fatty, you know, Kanye West, his verse. What I thought about it, it was really short, but it, and uh, what I disliked is that it was short. What I enjoyed about his verse is that his his voice, his tone, really felt relaxed, laid back. It was really just a really chill flow. Again, the backup vocals very subtle, but they do everything for this track. Her verse is is extremely sexual. Um, I felt like her verse was kind of all over the place. There wasn't really a a flow that I could pinpoint where she was sticking with it for too long. You know, it really felt kind of all over the place. She actually finishes her verse by moaning a lot <laughs> into uh, into the microphone and. Um, it felt kind of unnecessary, kind of out of place to me, definitely too loud 
um, and, and that it was taking away from the music instead of adding to it. Um, I felt like it was a necessary, you know, I didn't necessarily feel uncomfortable, but I'm sure some people might have felt uncomfortable by listening to her moaning into the microphone. I just felt like it, it wasn't really needed. For the last hook, when we're getting towards it, the piano comes in, it really makes it f the track feel more full, and I feel like the chord progression changes a little bit towards the end. It definitely feels better towards the end um, when that piano comes in. I felt like they could have added it a little bit more uh, throughout the rest of the track because it really made the beat feel more full. It made the track feel a lot better. All in all, this track, it really wasn't my favorite, um, but I wouldn't skip it if it came on necessarily. But definitely out of the first four tracks that I heard, this is definitely not is my least favorite one. And then we go right into track five, which is Three Way, featuring Ty Dolla Sign. And man, that Ty Dolla feature was so surprising to me, but I absolutely adored it. It was, it was great. In Three Way, we get this really great Rhodes piano, super R&B-ish, right? Super smooth, very soulful. Incredible backup vocals in this track. Like, when I say that the vocals, the backup vocals are doing everything, in this track, they're absolutely amazing. Like, they really stand out. They really do everything for this track. This track is not this track without those backup vocals. <laughs> I actually wrote down, chord progression, godly. So, I was really feeling the chord progression. It really feels amazing um, listening to this track, listening to that chord progression. On that piano, it sounds awesome. It's got this really cool plucked bass line that I thought was awesome. Um, when she sings the melody to this song, it's super catchy. It gets stuck in your head. There are a couple of, um, of sharps and flats that she hits that are absolutely outstanding. They really make this track stand out from any, any other track on this project and any more modern um, tracks in the same vein. You know, her singing really makes these songs unique, and she really makes all of them her own. So again, very sexual themes in this project, or in this, in this track mostly. I was talking about a three-way, and she wants, she wants to do this, this threesome basically because she knows it's going to turn her man on, she knows that it's what he likes, and she says two heads are better than one, you know, in this track. Don't let your kids listen to this, basically. This is definitely more intimate, late-night, freaky-deaky music, so you don't want little children getting anywhere near this. It's not something that you're just gonna play for the whole family to listen to on a road trip. Her riffs in this track, I mean, her vocal riffs are outstanding, really. They, they shown so much to me. Again, like I said, the Ty Dolla Sign feature, when it came in, I literally wrote down in all caps, whoa, Ty Dolla, because it's like, this track fits him so well. He Actually, he fits this track so well. He His feature on this just made so much sense to me as soon as I heard it, hit, heard him come in. He kills it. You know, I wrote down he's a cheat code feature, so she put a cheat code verse in from Ty Dolla on this track. Definitely worked. Um, this is probably one of my favorite tracks off this project. Absolutely loved it. Track six is A Rose in Harlem. The last couple of tracks really felt a little more modern. This one definitely brings back that old school soulful feel. Um, it's, it returns for this track. The sample, um, absolutely great. I felt like this track was a really cool homage to Tupac's poem about the rose growing up through the crack in the concrete. Absolutely awesome reference. We get this very cool, very jazzy, smooth horns sample. Um, or at least it feels like a sample. If, if someone actually played that out, that was... I love the horns in this track, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And then, all of a sudden, we get these, this really old-school sample, these really smooth jazz horns, with these modern trap drums. Um, it, it's such a cool combination. It makes this production stand out. Like, if you heard this anywhere else, just the track, no vocals, you would be like, oh my god, you know, who made this? Um, it definitely feels very, very much so Kanye West. And I absolutely love that about this project, is that even though it's more of a, a smooth jazz, R&B, soulful type of feel, um, you can tell that Kanye produced it. You know, a hip-hop producer made this. And um, there's a reason that Kanye, to me, is not one of the greatest hip-hop producers of all time. He is the greatest producer of all time, to me. Um, and, and this is definitely one of those reasons, is his versatility. He can make any type of music. She flows on this beat. I mean, this beat had me like this. You know, my head was like... I almost broke my neck listening to this beat. My, my head was bobbing like crazy. The chord progression is awesome. This track is really, really a standout track, and it makes sense because I've seen it being covered on social media everywhere. Talking about the reference to Tupac's poem, talking about Rose in Harlem by Tiana Taylor. It's great when you hear her on this track because instead of singing very soulfully, she's got swag in her voice, and you can hear it, you know. She's really riding this beat. She's, she absolutely feels comfortable doing this too. You know, she's, it's, it's not like the previous tracks, but she feels like she's right in her element, or it definitely feels like it when you listen to her. Um, just 
so much swag in her voice, really. It, you can tell when you listen to it. If you haven't heard it, definitely give this track a listen. Right when the ending is approaching, this track feels longer than all the other ones, even though it's only 3 minutes and 40 seconds long, because all the other tracks tend to be really short. And, um, it definitely got to a point where I needed a switch up, and right when I was starting to think, man, this, this is getting kind of long, these strings came in right at the perfect time. It was amazing. Um, I'm really glad that actually they put those strings in there because they did everything for me. They saved this track for me, really, from being from feeling too long. Great stuff, really. Uh, we actually end on just the strings, and they, they're really emotional. They really pull almost a sadness out of you. Really, they just sound so good. Track 7 is Never Would Have Made It. <clears throat> and um, instead of like smooth jazz and soul, we get these really gospel chords. I'm talking like it sounds like something straight out of church, right? Straight out of the Southern Baptist. Everyone dressed up in their Sunday best. Really, it, it takes you right there. You know, these chords, you can definitely tell that Kanye was feeling gospel music when he made this one, really. Um, in, in terms of, of how the song feels, it feels bright. It feels cheerful, whereas the other songs kind of felt like smooth and chill and R&B-ish. This one really feels bright and happy. You know, her vocals, again, definitely stand out. She's singing in a very gospel style. The bass line to this song is so groovy, really. It's going to make you want to move. You hear this song and you want to dance to it. The drums, again, they're so simple, but they really work with the track. They, again, having simple drums really puts an emphasis on the rest of the track. Uh, the vocals, the singing, the backup vocals, really, really great stuff. And it's amazing how Kanye knows that. And so the drums are there and they sound great, but they're simple, which is great. It, it, it totally works. You get these really subtle, but very, very melodic leads. They really do everything for this track. They really make it feel groovy. They really add more to the, the make you want to dance-ness of this track, <laughs> right? Those leads are awesome. Um, very West Coast hip-hop-ish leads. In this song, it, it feels very reminiscent, very appreciative of everything. She definitely feels uh, thankful and grateful for everything in this track. Um, it's, it's, a, in a, it's really the theme of this song, you know, never would have made it without you. Um, it definitely makes you feel a, sort, a sense of, of gratefulness and of appreciation. This music, I would definitely classify it as feel-good music, you know. You put it on and it puts you in a good mood. It makes you feel happy. It makes you see the bright side all of a sudden. Um, the choir I mean, Chance the Rapper-ish, really. Just gospel choir, it just really uplifting. That's what this song is. And um, towards the end, we end on birds chirping in the background. It really makes it feel happier. It makes us feel um, like there's a natural feel to the song. It really makes the song feel like it's a Sunday morning song because, you know, Sunday morning going to church, you hear the birds chirping. It feels like springtime. Just really positive vibes in this track, and I absolutely loved it. So with this project, we broke the um, the seven track uh, pattern that Good Music was, was rolling with, really. Uh, we got eight tracks, and according to Tiana, this isn't the full version. Uh, they're updating it this weekend, and so by next week there should be another track, um, and they're adding a couple samples to a couple songs. So we got eight tracks in this one so far, and it's called WTP. And immediately, as soon as it starts, it feels completely different from everything we've heard in this project. And honestly, my reaction as soon as I heard the beginning was... Okay, you know, I just immediately wasn't feeling it. Like, I absolutely did not like it from the, from the get-go. Um, this track felt extremely unnecessary. It felt like it didn't belong on this project at all. It didn't really make me want to move, it didn't make me want to dance, it didn't make me feel happy, it didn't make me feel anything but just... I was kind of cringing, actually, because it just felt so out of place. It was just like, we've got this song, just put it in there, even though it really probably should have been a throwaway track. Um, again, it just felt so out of place, just so unnecessary. I feel like track 7 would have been the perfect ending to this project, but track 8 kind of really ruined the ending for me because it basically took everything that this project was making you feel up until that point and just kind of threw it out the window, you know, because it's just so different. Yeah. It, I just feel like track 8 was very unnecessary and it shouldn't have been in the project at all. But my review to this project overall, um, I think it is a fantastic album. It was such a breath of fresh air hearing Kanye do this type of music. I mean, I really needed this soulful, um, old school style of R&B and trap. It just feels so great to listen to. Definitely you can vibe to this entire thing except for that last track. 
Um, it is a great track to just put on in the background, put it on during a, a car ride. You can just listen to it when you're chilling out at home. I thought this album was great. Um, I will definitely go back and give it more listens. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed this album. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, I know the format is different. I know it's not what we're used to, but like I said, until we're able to get a new speaker, because this one unfortunately passed away, um, these are going to be the format of the videos. We're just going to listen to all the albums still. We're going to be keeping track of all the new music. We're going to be reviewing them so you guys still get my view on your favorite projects and in more detail even. So I feel like it might even be a little better. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments. Don't forget to hit all the links in the description if you need to hit me up. If you need to, um, if you feel like you want to go support me on Patreon, I would be really thankful to that. If you feel like you want to donate a couple dollars, a dollar, two dollars, a couple cents. Uh, to my PayPal towards getting a new speaker. I would really appreciate that. And if you can't, if you really can't afford that, if you really can't afford to, I totally understand, no hard feelings. If you could give this video a like and a share so that more people would see it, I'd be really appreciative of that and that's free. So again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for being here. The goal is to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. We were able to hit 500 by the end of this month. I'm super happy about that. Thank you all so much. Uh, we'll be back very soon with another review. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be doing J Rock Redemption. I'm gonna be doing Juice World Project. I'm gonna be listening to Death Grips. I'm gonna be listening to uh, a lot of stuff. So we'll be back very soon. We're recording almost daily. Thank you all again, and until uh, next time, peace.